Hi everyone, welcome to the channel, and today we're going to be looking at a Patreon's question. Now this is from Les Eggleston, he's a very talented miniature creator from over in Australia. Now he's looking to model this phone box, and the main problem that he's having is this top bit. Now you can see we've got a curvature on this top bit here. And if we look, we can see that basically it's a square with the top coming down at these four points. And we've got a technical drawing here of all the dimensions, etc. We're going to be looking to see how we can actually tackle this top bit. There are a number of ways of doing this. We could do it via lofts. We could see if we can do it via the surface workbench. But I'm going to take the approach from the curves workbench. So we're in FreeCAD and I've created a new document. If we look back at the photo, we can see that this feature has this curvature on top. And also it has a lip. So we want to create this feature here. So there are a number of ways of doing this with lofts, surfaces, etc. But what I'm going to do is think of this as a wireframe and recreate the wireframe of this part. I can create a sketch here and create duplicates and rotate them and mirror them across here. There are a number of ways of doing this. So let's go back to FreeCAD and first start in the sketcher. I'm going to create a new sketch and we're going to go along the X, Z plane and hit OK. I'm going to use the end point and rim point arc. I'm going to create a symmetrical across this point here. So I'm going to connect it to this axis and what we'll do is create, actually rather than just two arcs, we'll create three. So we have some full control over those and we'll create something like that. Let's put some tangency across here. So using the tangency, we could select one and the other and then create tangency across those, but because I've got three, I'm gonna select the tangency straight away from the top, making sure nothing's selected, and then select these two, hit OK. This means the tool is still active, so I can select these two now, and hit OK. I'm going to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back or right mouse button. And we need to make some symmetry constraints with these. So at the moment we've got this arc here. So I'm going to take these two points and this center point and use some symmetry constraint. And we'll do the same with these ones as well. And this center line and use symmetry across those. So now we've got this shape that we can fully control. So I want something like, like that. Let's place some distance between these two of around about 100 millimeters. So we've got our shape and I can control the curvature of this with these three points. That'll do for now, let's close that. And we're looking from the top at the moment. Let's come around to the side, so the front, and you can see that there. So we've just sketched this arc here. And we're going to create a wireframe of this feature. So I'm going to need four of these arcs. But first of all, we need an additional workbench to work with. So this is an external workbench. Go to Tools and Add on Manager. And use the filter and search for Curves Workbench. So this one here, the Curse Workbench, and we click on that and install that, and that works with nerve surfaces, and also we've got tools in there to extract out curves, etc. And we're gonna need this for the workflow that we're following. So we've just got to install that. I've got it already installed, and I'm gonna come over to that workbench and click on Curves. So create the sketch. I'm gonna change this into a single arc now by using this tool here the join curves. That joins all the curves in that arc. The reason being is that we have a single edge to create a nerve surface from. And this works with something called a Gordon surface. So now I need to create duplicates of this and bring them out this way and here. To do that, I'm gonna use the draft workbench. Now the reason why I'm using the draft workbench is because it has drafting and snapping tools to allow me to rotate and snap this. 
I've got the snapping tools enabled. So you can see this padlock here. It's enabled and we've got snap end point, snap midpoint, and snap center point. Sometimes you'll find these up here under one of these drop downs, and you can pull it down if you want. I've got mine here. I can come up to the view and the toggle axis cross so we can see the center there. When we're using drafting, we must make sure that our plane is selected. So this is our working plane. Make sure nothing's selected. And we want to rotate this around the top plane, so the top here. So we want to rotate this along this plane this way. So make sure nothing's selected and come up to the utilities and select plane and select top. So our plane is now set. We've got our arc here and I'm going to click on it and come up to the modifications and come down to the rotate. That's select the top so we can see what we're doing. So we're going from the top and bring this down. On the left hand side here, we've got some options and the option that I'm looking for is the copy. I click that, when I rotate this, it'll create a copy. What I'm looking for is the point of rotation. So with our snapping, if I hover over this point, you can see the snap endpoint as enabled. Click once and we get this line. If I come over to the right hand side, this is going to be the point that I'm going to handle the rotation with. So we snap endpoint again, click once, and we've picked that up and it's rotating around this point. As I move the mouse, it rotates. If we look to the left, you can see the rotation changes. I'm going to take my finger off the mouse and type in 90 and hit enter. We get a 90 degree angle. So basically now we just repeat the process for the others by selecting the join curve, modifications, rotate, always remembering that the copy is selected and look at our rotation point, our handling point and rotate this up and type in 90 and hit enter. Same again, take this join curve, modifications, rotate, make sure that the copy is selected rotation point, handling point, and this one's better because we can snap to this point down here. And if the axis crosses in the way, we'll just add some rotation and we'll bring this in and snap to there. So we've got that there. Let's turn the grid in off. We can see that. And we've got our wireframe. Because we've got the wireframe with the join curves, I can now come over to the Curves Workbench, make sure nothing's selected, and I'm going to use something called the Gordon Surface, this one here. Create a surface that skins a network of curves. So this is the network of curves, and we'll select those, all those from here, all those join curves. This one's become enabled, and we'll click that. We now get the Gordon Surface, as you can see here, and We've skinned those curves with that. We can now add some depth to this. Now we may want to just extrude it over in the part webbench and click on the golden surface and using the extrude and select in the Z. And we can say we want this, say 80. So we've got that there. We can extrude that down and cut the bottom off from here doing some booleans or even using the part design and create a body in there, come to the model and take this extrude and place it within the body. Therefore I've got a base feature and I can select the face and create a sketch upon there and decide what I want to do. So I could take off this bottom like so, hit close, and create a pocket and do a through all to take the bottom off like so and hit OK and start my modeling in here. If we look back, we can see this is raised. 
So the feature here, we could do a part offset. So let's just delete that body. Bring back the extrude, let's delete that as well. And click on the golden surface, press the spacebar to bring that back. So for that, we need to offset that. Let's come over to the part workbench and we click on the golden surface, use the 3D offset, part 3D offset. We got the offset in there. We need to make that filled. So fill the offset and we can increase the offset to what we want, like so. That's going outwards. And we've got some nice clean edges. And with that, we hit OK. So we've got that now. At any time, we can come into this sketch and change the length or the curvature of this sketch. And let's bring this down to say here and hit close. And we get a different style. So a different curvature in there. Looking back at the reference image, we can see, well, we've got this in here. So we do need to extrude downwards somehow. And again, we could use wireframe techniques, say that's create a line going down here and create a ruled surface across here or a surface, or we could cheat. Using FreeCAD, what we can do is extract out this face. Now, there's a number of ways to do that. We could use the part design and use the Subshape Binder, or we could use the Draft Workbench and use something called a face binder. So select the face and on our drafting, we've got the face binder and click that. What's happened if we look at the model, we get a face binder here and that selected that face in there and binded that face. So it's similar to a subshape binder. And we can take that and add some extrusion. So we've got extrusion here, let's say of 50. But you see that, well, it's, basically gone the wrong way. So rather than adding the extrusion in here, that's zero that back out and hit enter, we can add the extrusion elsewhere. We can extrude face binders over in the part workbench. Take the face binder, hit extrude, make sure we select the direction because before the extrusion went this way, so the normal of that shape was actually going this way rather than up. So Z axis and we'll go something like a hundred millimeters and that's placed that in there. So you can see we've got that shape in there. Let's change this strewed a bit to something like 50 mil. So you can see we're creating this shape in here and it's a case of basically getting the lengths right And again, using some cut features in here, either a boolean cut to cut this away or dropping this into the part design workflow. So coming over to something like the part design, cut some model, create a body, take that extrude, and we can drop that in there. Now, one thing to remember that the offset and this extrude are not joined together yet. So we'll just join those together over the part workbench. Take those two and create a union. So this one here, which is a Boolean union, part, Boolean and union. Now they've created a fusion. We can drop that into the body and we can work upon that. Make sure because we're using offsets that if I come into the fusion, the offset is hidden, make sure that's hidden. But we've got the golden surface still showing, so press the space bar on there. So all those are hidden in there. We're now working in the active body, which means we can use the part design workflow and create a sketch upon here. New sketch. And looking at our feature, well, we can do a pocket across here, close that and use pocket through all. 
So we cut that off. Okay, that. And we can add our lip on here as well. We've still got this dip in here. If we wanted to, then we could strew this right out and cut further up. It's just because we haven't strewed it enough and we can just always go back into the original fusion, into the extrude, which is the extrusion of the face binder. Just click on that and we'll set this to something like 80. And you can see something's failed. So our pocket has failed and it's resulted in multiple solids. And the reason why is we look at the sketch, what's happened is that now this isn't pocketing all the way here. So what's happened is it's pocketed this way and it's resulted in two bodies. So we just take this, pull it down and close that. There we go. So we've got that now. And we just select the bottom. New sketch. And I'm doing this freehand. Obviously you would add constraints or what you want on here. Like so. And we'll close that and we'll pad that. It's going to go this way, which is right. And you can see how we can build at the top of this object up quite easily. So I hope that's giving you an idea of how to create such an object like this, how to tackle an awkward surface and use the Curse Workbench with the Part Design Workbench. So I hope you found that useful and I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.